In an object-oriented language like Java, a class defines a set of objects. It encapsulates the state and behavior of objects of that type. State means the properties of the object that make it different from other instances of the same class. How big is it? What color is it? What are the names of the kangaroos it defeated in previous bouts? Behavior means things that the object can do, like change its interest rate, compare itself to another object, or tell us how long its wings are. As an example, consider a pizza. Mmm, pizza. The state of a pizza includes its crust, sauce, cheese, and toppings. Whether the pizza is cooked and how many slices are left also fall under state. What about behavior? It may seem that a pizza doesn't have any behavior. It just sits there. Remember, though, that in an object-oriented language, we don't do things to objects. We tell them to do things to themselves. A pizza could therefore be asked to cook itself or serve up a slice. Adding sauce, cheese, and toppings could also count as behaviors. State is represented by fields, also called instance variables. Behavior is represented by methods. Most sources will agree that it's best to focus on the behavior first. In the end, that's all that really matters. The state is there only to support the desired behavior. We don't need to include, say, the longitude and latitude of the pizza, because there's no behavior that needs this information. If our pizza were able to deliver itself, the story would be different. It's also good to think about how the class will be used before thinking about how it will be implemented. To that end, let's think about how we might use the pizza class if we had it. Mmm, stock photography. A main method that uses the pizza class is shown on the left, its output on the right. The method creates an instance of the class and then calls various methods on it. Notice that every time we call a method, it either returns a value, modifies the pizza, or both. One way of specifying the design is a UML class diagram. Here's a detailed diagram for our pizza class. The state is described above, the behavior below. Some UML class diagrams leave out some of these details. When a diagram is meant to convey the relationship between classes, it may leave out the state, the behavior, or both. Diagrams are meant to communicate. The right level of detail depends on the situation. Since we're interested in just one class here, we go into quite a bit of detail. For each field, we have a visibility modifier, in this case always a minus sign for private, the name of the field, and its type. For each method, we have a visibility modifier, usually plus for public, the name of the method, the names and types of any arguments, and the return type. The describe method has a hash mark to indicate that it is protected. Methods that aren't public should generally be protected. If we went all the way to private, subclasses wouldn't be able to use them. We gave the add topping method a return type of boolean because it might fail. Let's say it fails if there are already three toppings. Pizza is a constructor. We can tell because it doesn't have a return type and it has the same name as the class. Now, let's implement our design for a pizza. Mmm, running joke. Here's the code. Hiding the fields by making them private means that anyone using our class has to go through our methods. They therefore can't uncook our pizza or add more slices to it. This sort of encapsulation makes code maintenance and debugging much easier. Every field and method has a javadoc comment. These can be used by the Javadoc program to produce nicely formatted HTML documentation, or by the Eclipse IDE to provide handy pop-up tooltips. The toString method doesn't have a comment because this method overrides one inherited from the superclass, object. It therefore inherits a comment explaining what toString does. The at override tag is optional, but protects us from accidentally overloading when we meant to override. This code is not entirely bulletproof. Someone could change the sauce after the pizza is cooked. As an exercise, you might try modifying the code so that ingredients can't be changed after they're added. In practice, how much work should be done to make sure clients can't break the code involves trade-offs between running time, development time, and correctness. Mmm, credits.